Hello, and welcome to the Eve Echo Chamber. Today, new pilot guide and Omega Progression, baby's first cruiser. Let's get started. So first things first, I've cautioned you before against going for drones. I had to spend about 8 million ISK on the blueprint for these drones, and then I think it cost 3 million more in materials. But hey, got them. If you followed my Alpha Clone progression videos, you theoretically would have been able to get the Mark V weapons for your ship if you did not go for drones, just by farming with a frig. I did spend my time in the past couple of days doing a whole bunch of anomalies, but I didn't get much of the equipment that I wanted. So I'm just going to throw together kind of a bad fit and show you what these cruisers can do. As promised, I am selecting the Vexor Trainer, and we're going to go through an encounter with it in just a minute. I also will show you me fitting out the ship. The fittings I use are pretty terrible. The only good thing are the weapons, and my skills by this point are quite good for the ship as well. Now I'm going to show you both what not to do, and what to do when you're using these trainer cruisers. The reason I have such a terrible fit is that the game won't tell me how I'm supposed to fit this. Thanks, Netties. Ha, ha, ha. Jokes aside, the reason that my fit is so bad is because I don't want to spend any more isk buying the things that I think I can get just from farming. I don't use that afterburner because that is a small afterburner, and now that we are in cruisers, we need to start using medium-sized modules. Same reason for my armor repairers and shield boosters. If you want to, you certainly can try to use the small modules, but be aware that they are not intended for your cruiser. I end up settling on two Mark III drone damage amplifiers in the low slots, as well as a Mark III reactive armor hardener in the last low slot. For my mid slots, I use four of my Mark V medium drones, hammerheads, and I put a stasis webifier in there as well, because why not? I don't put anything in my high slots, and I leave the second mid slot empty as well. There should be two glaring mistakes in this fit for anybody out there. Well, two besides the empty slots. You really should not fly a ship with empty slots. But the two weaknesses I'm talking about, one, no propulsion mod, and two, no active tanking mod. That would be an armor repairer or a shield booster. Now I did it because I wanted to show that even if you fit this thing really terribly, it can still do advanced encounters. That's because now that we have a cruiser, we are going to advanced encounters as well. Because we have a range advantage, and we have the ability to kite, and none of our enemies are going to prevent us from warping away, we can warp in, stay far away so we don't take much damage, kill anything that we can, and then, if we're in danger, we just warp back to the station. Because we don't have an armor repairer and or shield booster, we do have to pay at the station to repair our ship. And because we don't have an afterburner or micro warp drive, we can't kite as efficiently as we want to either, so we are going to end up taking too much damage. But since I literally just got this ship, I don't think that's too bad. As I am doing the audio for this video, I've already finished a full day of using this ship and doing Pyroxy's encounters as well. That'll be the next video. And I still haven't gotten much of the equipment that I want, but I really don't want to have to buy it. I'm hoping that if I continue to do these encounters, and maybe some anomalies, they'll just naturally drop for me. And to talk about progression again a little bit, my next target ship after this one is certainly a Vexor Navy issue. This is pretty common for everybody who's had an Omega clone, that you get the trainer cruiser you like, and then you move on to the Navy cruiser of your faction, whenever you can. I currently plan on reverse engineering and building my own Vexor Navy issue. We'll see how that goes. It should take me about two more days of training to reach tech level 6, which is required to build that ship. Now on screen you saw me readjust my orbit distance, and you see me grouping up my drones. I have two different groups of two. Uh, no particular reason, I just felt like doing them that way. I have now skipped ahead to where I'm warping in, and first I'm doing it as you should not do it. And I'm torn whether I should tell you the mistakes as I'm making them, or if I should just kind of show you what happens first. So the first mistake was pressing that confirm button. You should not be warping into zero. And here's a do. 
do set your autopilot route so you have that panic button in case you need to warp away in a hurry. Do pull range. Make sure you're fighting at your optimal range, not the enemy's. If your range is longer, go out farther so you take less damage. Don't let electronic warfare modules like the Stasis Webifier force you into shorter range than you have to fight at. Currently, my drone control range is something like 21.3 kilometers, and it can get better with better skills and better equipment. So I should be orbiting, or aligning, or doing whatever I need to do to stay around 20 kilometers away from my opponents. The Stasis Webifier is there for if they try to come closer than that to me. You see right now, despite the mistakes, still going pretty well. Even without any armor repairer or propulsion mod, I'm barely taking any damage, and I'm slowly but surely killing the enemies.
Don't get caught with your pants down when the next wave spawns. You know when the last enemy is about to die. You know to be prepared for the next wave. Do dock up for repairs or warp out as soon as you realize it'll be necessary. You are not impressing the rats by staying there and fighting them for longer than you have to. And it is not cowardice if the enemy was too stupid to bring warp disruptors. Later on, they will bring warp disruptors. Don't warp in at zero. I don't know who this idiot is, but he is a slow learner. do align to a station. This makes it much easier and quicker for you to warp out if you need to. Don't use auto orbit in the settings if you are going to be aligning or kiting. Because this is a much larger wave than the initial wave, it shows off much more clearly why you should not be warping in at zero. I will obviously need to warp off because I've taken too much damage, much more quickly than I did the first time around. Do warp in at range. Worst case scenario, you need to approach within your range, for me, 20 kilometers, so I could put my warp drones on the active. enemy, before then aligning back to the station. To warp in at range, press down and hold on warp, and you can drag it to whatever range you want, the same way that you drag set orbit. You will see that now that they don't start off directly on top of me, I take damage much more slowly.
And last but not least, don't forget to loot. That would be very embarrassing. Let's take a moment to review. Do set autopilot route. Don't warp in at zero. Do pull range greater than 10 kilometers. Don't set range based on E-War. Do warp out as needed. Don't forget the new spawns. Do align to a station. Don't use auto orbit when you're kiting. Do warp in at range. And don't forget to loot. Thank you for watching. This has been the Eve Echo Chamber. Fly safe.